z is equal to 1, so So if x is equal to 1 over square root of 2, then we have 1 is equal to the square root of 2, because we're doubling it, plus z. So in this case, our z value is 1 minus the square root of 2, and here it's 1 plus the square root of 2. So these are the x, y's, and z's, the only points where everything works out. Wow, I didn't mess it up. How does 1 over the square root of 2 times 2 come into the square root of 2? Oh, wait, I see. You, 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 okay, you rational. Never mind. I got it. Both of these points into F. So from the first point, you get, um, all right, so the value of F that you get is uh, 1 minus the square root of 2. And uh, the second point, 1 plus the square root of 2. Um, so this is the min, a constrained min. The other is a constrained max. So come up with candidates, as many as you can find, that satisfy this relationship. And then plug them into a function. Largest value is a constrained max. Yep, the smallest is the... Uh, constrained min. Yeah. All right. So questions about this thankfully unflawed example. Find max or min on a compact, which is closed and bounded set. Um, an example of that would be, for instance, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is less than or equal to 4. So it's the sphere of radius 2 and the ball contained inside it. So it's the interior and the containing sphere. Um, so here's what you do is you find a regular, unconstrained critical points. Just like we talked about last time, just where the gradient is equal to zero. And you exclude any critical points that are not in the set at all. So if you're totally outside of that ball, just toss them out. Second, you find the any critical points on the boundary using Lagrange multipliers. So what that means is the boundary gives you your constraints. Because this part will help you find any max, potential max or min in the interior of a sphere. So in this example, your constraint would be x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 4. So you're finding max or min of f subject to this constraint. Um, so, uh, so this gives you additional candidates. So there's points in the interior that could be max or min, and there's points in the boundary that could be max or min. You find all of them. And then, step three, take all the critical points you find in steps one and two, plug them into F. So largest one is your max, smallest one is your min.